Good. So uh, we're talking about sources of labor laws. So we have done the constitution of Malawi. For those that were not here, uh, anyway, you would look into the notes. The Employment Act as one of the sources of law, Labor Relations Act, Pension Act, Workers' Compensation Act, Occupational Safety, Health and Welfare Act, Technical Entrepreneurial and Vocational Education Training Act, Companies Act, Public Service Act, International Labor Organization Convention, uh, ELOC. So, uh, Last time we stopped at the Workers' Compensation Act, and uh, today we are starting with the Occupation Safety, Health and Welfare Act. So we are going to go there straight. Occupation Safety, Health and Welfare Act. This act covers the following. The act is covering the following. Registration of workplaces. So we are always asked, where are the people going to work? Are the people having offices? Are the people having good ventilation? Are the people uh, be able to access water? Are the people going to be, you know, all sorts of things. So when we talk about Occupational Safety, Health and uh, Welfare Act, it is covering about, uh, number one, registration of workplaces. You cannot just uh, come up with a company and then you call people to come in, yet you don't have a place where they can sit down. This becomes an abomination. And therefore, uh, for example, um, institutions like uh, this university, always it is the requirement of NCHE to make sure that uh, every lecturer has got a place to sit and prepare for, uh, for lectures. So you must have a workplace, a workplace which is uh, good, a workplace which has got a light, a workplace which is well ventilated, a workplace which is clean, a workplace which is uh, so conducive uh, for someone else to come in and work. So the act is covering all that. So if you go against it, if your place is not healthy, I tell you, you can, you, your company can be closed. I remember a few years ago, um, there was a dump site along, uh, along bypass and people were dumping, uh, dumping and dumping uh, uh, liters there. And therefore, uh, people surrounding the area, they complained to say, ah, why are you coming here to dump uh, the liters? So finally they resolved to say, no, this is a dwelling place. This is a place where people are staying and therefore should not be a dumping place. So we are saying every workplace must be always uh, clean and smart and away from uh, flies. The other part that uh, the act covers is about duties and responsibilities. What are the duties that this particular individual is going to do? If his duty is, for example, uh, is, is a nurse and he is always in contact with the people that have a disease, and therefore this nurse must be well protected. This nurse must have those gloves. This nurse must have a mask. This nurse must have a, a coat. A white coat always, huh? so that is protected uh, from any kind of disease. So you look also at the duties and responsibilities. And uh, you know, you, you can't believe why do you think these days people are using the whiteboards and the and the uh, PowerPoint presentations? Why do you think? Yes. Yes. Like yes. Aha, through chalk, like that black, uh, that board which you can see. So no, nowadays people are no longer using chalk uh, boards, but they're using white boards as well as the PowerPoint presentation, so that the, at least a lecturer is protected and is protected. Health and welfare issues. Health and welfare issues is that uh, 
uh, the act is there to make sure that uh, workers are health all the time. In other words, when one gets sick, you must go to the hospital immediately. Or the company, the organization, must be able to put this particular person on Mazim so that at least he's always healthy. And Mazim today, they have got a gym. Uh, if, you, if you go area 30, you know, area 3, as you go to Chinsako, there is a gym there where by all Mazim members are going for exercises. So Occupation Health and Safety Welfare uh, Act is covering such kind of issues. And another one is what we call machinery safety. safety. Machinery safety is that uh, when you are working at a machine, how safe is this particular individual when he is there at a machine, operating a machine? What about if it is at night? And uh, at night, you know, he can get asleep. If he gets asleep, is he going to be caught up by the machine? Where are the protections? Suppose he's caught up. You know, something like that. So it is very important that uh, uh, the act is covering such kind of uh, safety. Um, another one is notification and investigation of accidents, dangerous uh, occurrences, and industrial uh, diseases. Notification and investigation of accidents. You know, you must be able to have something that would be able to notify people that there is danger there. Uh, there is a problem there, and so on and so forth. I saw one day when uh, Mount Soch Hotel was about to uh, uh, catch fire, and the, the, uh, you know I heard a bell ringing. So it is a notification that something is wrong here, and therefore all the people that were there in the hotel had to run out uh, for safety. So you need to have such kind of notifications. But I haven't gathered the, what happened here at Kanengo. What is it that happened at Kanengo? I heard that the factory uh, got fire. And the tobacco, I think so many k kilograms of tobacco uh, have burnt. So, come again? I think they planned. They planned? People planned nowadays. Okay. Oh. And the whole company like that? A big company like that? Aha. Uh -huh. Oh. Okay. Okay. It, 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 it was an ac a planned accidental accident. Oh, 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 oh. This is bad. Aha. Aha. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Mm. People, people are very clever these days. People are very clever. <laughs> yes. Issues of records. Records must also be there in case someone else is, 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 is sick and has been sick for quite a long time. And that is his or her disease. For example, asthma. If one is suffering from asthma, you must take care of this particular person. Always must be covered. Eh? Today is cold, eh? uh, my dear sister. Today is very cold. Eh, if it if it's for me, I cannot manage to <laughs> be like that. You know, you've been in the sun. Okay, that's why. Yeah, yeah. So uh, when someone is suffering from asthma, you must be protected all the time. So records must be there to make sure that he, this particular individual is covered. Is covered. Uh, suppose uh, he, he is on uh, ARV, you must give him chance to take his ARV all the time. I don't know what times is uh, ARV taken. Is it in the morning, in the afternoon, or late afternoon? You choose when to take it. Yeah. Okay. So, but before you take it, you must take food first. Uh -huh. So that's 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 why we are saying that. Uh, we must always uh, take uh, records of whatever is happening there. And again, administration, issues of administration, issues of, uh, why are you jumping? Offenses, penalties, and legal proceedings. All these 
are part and parcel of uh, Occupation Health and Safety Act. Health and Safety Act. So the NB there is just a, a, a summary of what we have already said. Technical Entrepreneurial and Vocational Education and Training Act. Have we ever heard about TVET? Okay. Yeah, so when we talk about Technical Entrepreneurial and Vocational Education and Training Act, uh, this is an act which, uh, which was established to make sure that our youths are able uh, to get an employment, either self-employment or uh, they're employed by another organization. So the main point, the more, main job of this act is to have technical education and training to our, to our young ones. Because by doing so, they will have an opportunity to get a job. It can be either self-employment or employed by another organization. Uh, and, and this is what I'm doing for, for my PhD studies, uh, to see whether the technical entrepreneurial and vocational education and training is really uh, 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 fulfilling uh, the government's uh, policies and, uh, and, and uh, objectives. So the objective, number one, is to make sure that our youth are educated technically and they're also trained there. And also uh, that the Technical Entrepreneur and Vocational Training Authority of Malawi is established. Uh, okay, there is a difference between Tivet, Tivet and Tiveta. Okay, yeah. Tiveta is an authority. Like just as good as we have uh, Mche. Uh, what, what is that, uh, uh, that, that authority? Makra. Okay. So the, this is an authority whereby they authorize all technical uh, and entrepreneurial education in Malawi. So if you want to start your own uh, technical school, you have to go through Tiveta. Not Tivet, but Tiveta. It ends with an A, which means it is a training authority. Training authority. So uh, the aim of the act was to establish this training authority in Malawi so that they are able to regulate all the trainings of technical and vocation. Without the authority to control the trainings and, uh, 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 of this technical and vocation, definitely that is has not go act. So today we are able to see people getting into tailoring, people getting into mechanic, people getting into uh, various trades, into, into fabrications, people getting into painting and decorations, people getting into various uh, vocations. So uh, it is because of this act which authorized or which established the training authority that we are now able to enjoy uh, these uh, technical uh, things. Even the saloon is part of, of, of Tiveta. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's part of Tiveta. Eh? Yeah, you go and you'll be trained. You have to know how to uh, run a saloon. Run a saloon. Um, there is also, this act is, uh, has also made sure that uh, a board of authority has been established. And this board of authority is that uh, a board cannot run on its own. Uh, I mean, uh, authority cannot run on its own. It must run by a board. Authority is like a secretariat. But within that secretariat, there must be a board to cross-check or to, to, to supervise the authority, which is a secretariat. Uh, again, the training, uh, the, uh, the, the technical interpretivator also uh, brings in what we call Pero Leve. Pero Leve. They help to make sure that uh, people are paid accordingly. The labor, the people that are working in different areas, different sectors, are paid accordingly, are paid accordingly. Um, Another one is the establishment of a training fund. 
whereby a special a special fund is been given to Tiveta in order to train the younger ones. Tiveta has got now the powers to go to all training colleges and say, here's the money, I want you to train 10 girls. And then 10 girls would come in and be trained for free. And this one is coming from Tiveta Fund. It is a fund which is coming from either the government or is coming from other donors. Um, something like what uh, sa, sa, what is this? I can't remember the name of this uh, company. Sanweka, yeah, Sanweka. The people, the, the Sanweka, they, 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 that's, that's, that's what they do. They bring people, those that have got only JCE, only those that have got uh, standard A certificate, they would bring them together and help them to uh, repair a, a phone, repair a radio, repair a computer, and so on and so forth. So they receive funding from either Malawi government or from donors, and it is all what we call a training fund, which was established by the act, by the act known as the Tiveta Act. Tiveta Act. Okay. This act also provides for the promotion and coordination of technical, entrepreneurial, and vocational education training. It provides for the promotion and coordination of such technical colleges, technical colleges. So without that act, there would be no any promotion, no any coordination concerning uh, TVET, concerning TVET. So the act is helping to promote and coordinate the TVET activities, the TVET activities. So when you talk about the training fund and the payment, this is done periodically as a contributions uh, uh, levied on employers. And the application for the fund towards the defraying various costs and expenses relating to the technical education and training and further to provide for matters incidental to or connected with the uh, foregoing. In other words, uh, these are done periodically. It is not always, but it is done periodically, once in a while, 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 uh, pay, uh, training uh, funds are received and payments are done, and payments are done. Good. Let us come to Companies Act. Companies Act. The Companies Act in Malawi is governed by the Companies Act um, 71 of the 2008. And here are some of the key points about it. Let's look at the purpose. The purpose of the Companies Act is to provide for the incorporation, registration, organization, and management of companies in Malawi. So when you see a company in Malawi registered, you should be able to know that this one has entered into or has fulfilled what we call the Companies Act. So whatever they are doing at that organization, through the cooperation, through the registration, through the management of it, it is, it is based on the Companies Act. So they follow all the rules that are there in the company. For example, how would one throw out West? Majisanzo, uh, what would be a good, a good, uh, uh, okay, in, in Blanta we have, we have uh, dairy board. How do you think they throw out their West? Dairy board. In Blanta, do you have the data board? Okay. In Blanta, we have the water board, which is running the sewages in, in, in sorry, in, in the long way. Running the sewages in the long way. Where are these sewages ending up to? You don't know. Yes. Where are they ending up to? 
Do good. Uh -huh. It's where they. That's where they throw the. Uh -huh. Exactly. This this is where now uh, the companies act is coming in to say, okay, mukatenga zinyalala zonse in your sewage. Mukazi siabati. Most of the time, you will see guti. Amanguzi safer, Mazia Jenuga Guerra Song Tinch, which is now wrong. They are not supposed to do that. They are supposed to make sure, you know, Giri Jones, Giri Jones, and the Mazik and the Chinese in Yalazi, as you make a Buno Wino from there, a Guazika Magadini, Munda, Kuti Kuti, a Gurisa, and so on and so forth. This is how it must be done, but not necessarily throwing back the water into the river. Uh -uh. The water is now clean. Ah. But the way we treat in, in Malawi, the way we treat that particular thing, they go into the river without the proper treatment, without making it clean. Yeah, that, that's the challenge. They simply, they simply safe. Uh, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 yes, yes, yes. Aha. Uh -huh. Exactly. This is what is happening in many, many areas whereby people are cheating. They don't go by the company's act because the company's act will make sure whatever you're doing there is clean and smart. Okay? If you are cooking food, you, the person who is cooking, you must be always clean. And there must be taps all over so that you can wash your hands. Eh? Uh, in, in those days, bread, you can pick it, you can bread, you can pick it, you can pick it, you can pick it, you can pick it. Okay? But today, no, you can't find it. It's all machinery. So much. Why? Because the company act has changed to say you cannot do this manually. So we can't make a Oh, flour could not pick up bread. No way. No way. Yeah. So uh, it covers all that. It also covers aspects such as the company formation, capitalization, governance, accountability, public offerings, majors, takeovers, and insolvency. Okay, so when we talk about company formation, is how has this company started? Who is the owner? Is a, do we have a, a trustees in this company or not? Or it is a family company? So all that formation, you know, the, the company's act is providing all those avenues. Make sure that the moment you are starting a company, it is clear who is the owner of this company and who are the signals of this company. Capitalization. The companies act would want to know how much are you pumping into this business? How much are you bringing into this business? What about the tools that you're bringing into this business? What about the human capital that you're bringing to this, uh, the, this, uh, this uh, business? So the, the company act would look at all these uh, capital capitals that you will be bringing into the uh, organization. The other one is about governance. Governance and accountability. Governance is an issue. Who is the manager? And who is going to report to who? And so on and so forth. So you will be able, as, as company act, before you are registered, you know, they'll look into all these if you have fulfilled what the company act is talking about. Public offerings. Public offering here, we're talking about what are your responsibilities towards the public? You are just, you're just utilizing people that are there, making your profits. But what is it that you're doing for the society? What is it that you're doing for the, for, for, for the people that are outside there? Like, like as you go to, after, after Nkamenya, there's what we call? Well, after Nkamenya, there's, there's another town. You don't know this one? You haven't gone this side yet? Okay, where can I, can I give you an example? 
an example of uh, eh? M1 Road. Okay, I don't know about M1 Road where there is a construction work and the and the road uh, the, the road contractors have built a place like here, like a school what and building houses, blah 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 blah. So that after they have done with the construction, those premises, such premises will be turned now into a school. Either a primary school or a secondary school. I, I can't find it there. Yeah. So, but when you talk about public offerings, is if you are a contractor and you have been given a job to construct a road, you know, you are, you are, you are told to build a site. And this site must occupy, uh, like offices, must have offices. And after you are done with your job as a contractor, you must leave the offices for the use of uh, either to be a school or to be something for the government and for the people that are there. So that's what we mean by public offering. Making sure that you as an organization, you as a company, you are able to offer back to the people that are working for you. Majors. Majors are the, uh, 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 you know, you, you come together just as good as, as, as Tons Alliances, you know. <laughs> yeah, you join, you, may, you, you team up. You team up. So, you know, the company act looks at that. How are you teaming up? How are you coming together? And so on and so forth. Takeovers. Suppose maybe uh, your company is going bankrupt. Uh, maybe another company would want to come in and take over. So how are going to be the procedures? Are you just uh, doing it without uh, proper documentation? No, you must have, follow uh, proper documentation before someone takes over. Uh, you know Sugar, sugar uh, Skoma? Not Skoma. Salima Sugar? Who is the owner now of the Salima Sugar? You don't know. Okay, Salima Sugar is owned by Malawi, Malawi government. Uh, Salima Sugar is owned now by Malawi government. It is a Malawian company. Okay? Before that, it was the Chinese company. Yeah, it was a Chinese. But now, it's a Malawian company. So, Malawi has taken over. They have a, a bigger share. Bigger share uh, as far as uh, it is concerned. Okay, insolvency, meaning how dependent are you? How dependent are you? Are you auton or autonomous? Can you be able to make decisions on your own or not? What are the key provisions? Uh, it defines relationships between companies, shareholders, and directors. It defines that relationship between companies, shareholders, and directors. Are shareholders stakeholders? Uh, stakeholders, shareholders. Uh, shareholders, stakeholders. Uh, stakeholders, shareholders. Any idea? <laughs> uh, shareholders, stakeholders. Uh, stakeholders, shareholders. They're different. How? Okay, so our shareholders, stakeholders. That's a question. Our shareholders, stakeholders. And our stakeholders, shareholders. <laughs> You're right, okay? Not all stakeholders are shareholders. But shareholders are stakeholders. So... A stakeholder is any person who is interested eh, uh, into that company. So shareholders are stakeholders. That is the bottom line. But not all stakeholders are shareholders. So uh, this act defines the relationship between companies. This company and this company, how are they related? Are they one? If they are not one, what are the differences that are there? Is Airtel and TNM the same company? How do they differ? Is Airtel and TNM the same company? One company? 
It's one company. How uh, how uh, how come? That... <laughs> you see, so this is where now the companies act is trying to bring in that differences between companies, relationship between companies, and so on and so forth. Directors. Then when we talk about directors, our managers, directors, our directors, managers. So these are some of the things that we must. Uh, the act is looking at. Is looking at. Number two, on the same, facilitates equitable amalgamations, majors and takeovers. So the act, the company's act, is facilitating that equitable amalgamations. Because people, some people are so mono, monopolous. They are monopolizing things. And therefore, the company's act is there to facilitate that equitable amalgamation, that equitable majors, that equitable takeovers. So that no one monopolizes the market. No one monopolizes the market. Another one is it ensures efficient rescue procedures for financially distressed companies. Ensures efficient rescue procedures for financially distressed companies. They don't have money. And therefore, they go into uh, bankrupt. So these companies are always rescued financially through either NICO, which is National National Insurance Company of Malawi, NICO. They can borrow from the uh, Reserve Bank of Malawi. They can they can borrow from Old Mutual. They can take money from other insurances. Okay, so it ensures efficient rescue procedures for financially distressed companies. So if a company is going down, is going bankrupt, uh, the act, the company's act, is there to assist to make sure that it, it comes back to its feet. It comes back to its feet. Establishes the companies and intellectual property commission and take over regression panel to administer act requirements. So they establish the companies and intellectual property commission and they take over regulation panel so if there's uh, anything that needs to be taken over there is a panel to administer that to administer that so all this is the uh, what the act provides what the act provides what the act provides It also creates a company's tribunal for alternative disputes resolution and review of commission decision. There's a, what we call a company's tribunal. A company's tribunal is like a court whereby all cases concerning companies would go there for dispute resolution. Dispute resolution. So this tribunal would make a decision would make a decision to say, ah, in you know, something like that. It also advises on financial record keeping and reporting through the Financial Reporting Standards Council. So these people, the company act is there also to advise uh, how they can keep good records financially. Because uh, some companies are like, <laughs> Like, like, so, so owned companies owned by just a single person. So, if a company is just owned by a single person, frankly speaking, it is very easy to just spend money anyhow. Who owns uh, PLOU? Hmm? Person. Yes. So why giving me the church name? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, It is also wrong. Well, there's a church that they also like. I think. 
I, I don't know, I don't know. But it is run by an individual person. <laughs> so you you find that you know to run to run that organization is not easy for some people that are not related to okay so that's why a uh, 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 companies act would come in and say ah who much as you are running this but here are the things that you must do and this is uh, in check came in at one point in time i think uh, at one point in time they said this company must run independently this organization must run independently have a board have a council and the council should be able to monitor all what is happening here kumazima tega ah munuage amwene ndi munuage bas ah say today do funa jagudi bas chima chitika we see so um the company's act is there to advise on financial record keeping You are not answerable to anyone. And if you are not answerable to anyone, you can just do it the way you want it to be done. Yeah. Just as good as you are you are not a driver, but the car is yours. Do you, do you record, record mileage every day? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that, that's a problem. That's a problem. So the uh, Companies Act does not allow that. We wanted you to be keeping records, financial records, clean and smart. Good. Let's come to Public Service Act. The Public Service Act in Malawi outlines the roles and responsibilities of public servants. Okay. What are the roles and responsibilities of public servants in Malawi? What do you think are the roles and the responsibilities of public servants? Who is a public servant, by the way? Who is a public servant? Those that are working in the government. For example? A teacher, a nurse, and a policeman, woman, soldier. <laughs> exactly, you're right. So these are the people that are working. Uh, as public servants. What are their roles? What are their roles? They have, they have got different roles, eh? But the main one is to save Malawians. Okay? Is to save Malawians. So, the character of such public services are as follows. Number one, the public service aims to deliver services efficiently and effectively to the public. Is it true that these guys, they render services to us efficiently and effectively? <laughs> Don't say no. You are right. Don't say no. Eh? You go to the hospital. Ah, ah. You go to the hospital. Uh, I think it was it the day before yesterday. I went with a student who was part of that area. You know, yeah, that figure we just pack on a one hour. We can't see any doctor. We're not sick, eh? We can't see any doctor. But yet there's a doctor on duty. Where is he? Ah, I don't know. Ah, we don't. Even the guards could not tell where this doctor is. I don't know. I don't know. So it is their job is to save us to render services. And when they're rendering services to us, should be efficient and effective. It serves as an instrument of generating and maintaining public confidence 
in the government. If you see today that governments are marked red, it is not because of the president. It is because of the people that are working under that president. And the people that are working under that president, these are the civil servants. And these civil servants are there to make sure that they deliver services to the public efficiently and effectively. Now, the, the, the government, which is the president in, in this case, are the state house. But the people that are working on the ground are the consequence all over. You know, it's, it's like, if, for example, if, if, there's, if there's a child you know, at home, and that child's mother is not the, is, is not the one who is uh, manning the house, if a man goes away, the child suffers. He cannot be given food. He cannot be helped in one way or another. But if a man is there, this child would be taken care of as though all the time the, the, the child is taken care of. So what we're saying here is that in the absence of, of the president, because the president is, is, is at the state house, these civil servants who are everywhere in the, in the country, they are not rendering services efficiently and effectively. Why? We don't know. And yet they are the instruments of generating and maintaining public confidence. So, ngati mtu ama ipa, president ama ipa, o yambi nda kuhipisa president, these are the civil servants that are working there. Okay? Impartiality, dependency, and uh, permanency ensure uninterrupted government services regardless of political party changes. So, the Public Service Act is there to make sure that there is impartiality. There is impartiality. You don't, you don't, you don't favor this one and not this other one. You don't favor the northern region versus the southern region. You don't favor the central region uh, uh, you know, more than the other regions. No, 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 no. no. So the, C the Public Service Act is there to make sure that there's no impartiality. And make sure that there is also independence whereby the local councils are able to do their job well without any interference. Okay? You remember when uh, the VP went to Cholo district. They found there a friend of mine uh, as a district council, uh, dis district commissioner uh, by the name, I, I've just forgotten his name. And he said to, to the VP, a vice president, I have lots of money that is put in the bank of the local, of, of, of the local council bank. The MPs that are here are not, are not using the monies that are here. <laughs> so this is the one thing that these civil servants must be able to deliver services efficiently and effectively. He said it. <laughs> and he said it in front of the cameras. Okay? <laughs> he said it in front of the cameras. So what it means is that though local councils are independent, they are able to do their things well without, without any hindrances. But even there in the communities, people are not delivering their services accordingly. Uh, but also issues of permanence to ensure an interrupted government services. You know, when you change the government, always, sometimes in the past, I don't know nowadays, but in the past, when you change the government, you have also changed strategies. When you change the government, you have also changed the projects. When you change the government, you have also changed everything, everything. Even the, the PSs changes. Okay, why? Because the government has changed. But the Public Service Act has come in to say, gentlemen, if you are voted out today, still the 2063 agenda for the government will remain. Okay? The 2063 agenda for the government will remain. In other words, when you come in as a government, 
you parties, when you come in as a government, you must make sure that you follow the 23 vision and agenda. You don't come in with your own agenda. You don't come in with your own vision. Follow the 2063 agenda and the vision of it. So this Public Service Act is very strict on that. It's very strict on that. So that's why they said regardless of political party changes. If an MCP has come today, you can, you cannot change that this road, which, which is been constructed, M1 road, which has been constructed to be constructed somewhere else. No, no, cannot change that. So all the projects that are lined up up to 2063 must be done, must be done, regardless of the party which is coming into power, is coming into power. And then this public act is saying uh, it is the highest degree of integrity and the proper conduct, okay, the highest degree of integrity and proper conduct is expected from personnel at all levels. The highest degree of integrity and the proper conduct is expected from personnel of all levels. Whether you are a director, whether you are a PS, whether you are a minister, whether you are uh, a, even the president is a public figure. And therefore, they must conduct their job with integrity. Must conduct the job with integrity. Without that, then, then they, they should be voted out. They should be voted out. They should be voted out. So at all levels, you must conduct yourself with integrity and the uh, proper conduct. Okay, good. Number two, merit-based entry and advancement. Entry and advancement within the public service are determined solely on the merit, ensuring equal opportunities for all citizens. So you don't just venture into the public service. No way. And in two days' time, you can also change. Gufalaso salina blue. Ah, but in the in the in the in the member of which one is married. And after two weeks, you have changed again. You have put on another clothes. Whoa, what is this? Yellow. Okay. <laughs> you have changed the chipan. And again, you go to another place. You change again. I don't know what is the other color for the other uh, other parties. It's not about. Uh, Public Service Act. Public Service Act, when you get into it, it is on merit. You go through the interviews. You are checked whether uh, you qualify or not. So, and the opportunities are given to all citizens equally, whether you're a woman or a man or you are, you are, you are, you are handicapped or you are challenged, you are physically challenged or whatsoever opportunities are given to all to all so that's the beauty of being a public servant a public servant you go there uh, by marriage and when you are there by marriage no one can take you away no one can take you away unless you have wronged against that employment uh, uh, conditions if you haven't done well of course you you, you can be kicked out but even the Chipani, when it changes, they cannot throw you out. Because if they throw you out, the, the government will pay heavily unto you. What they just do is to remove you from this one seat and give you another seat to sit. That's all. So it is by merit. And also the appointments are made based on relative ability, knowledge, skill and aptitude after fair and open competition as i've already said you don't just come in because uh, you are a brother too no 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 because you are a sister too no 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 is it happening is it happening in these days in this country because you are a brother too you are a sister too you just you know from nowhere you are you are you are a public servant Sometimes it happens, okay? But still, you have to go through that competition. 
even even in those days teachers were just after graduating teachers were just going uh, and, and 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 start teaching in primary or secondary schools but today no no today a teacher must go through a competition a teacher even an essay yeah a nurse must go through a competition, must be checked whether he's fit to be a nurse or not, through an interview, through an interview. So uh, when you want to get into public service, you have to go through...